So if you've been following along, I've been on the Facebook marketplace and I've been hunting down used computer deals that I've been able to take, flip, repurpose, and even part out to make some coin, a little extra cash. And the reason behind it is, is that it's that time where every two years I like to upgrade my computers, keep them up to date, but it's also to kind of help the family out, um, get them newer stuff. I will take my hardware, which is still pretty decent and relevant, upgrade theirs, which is pretty outdated, and then get them something better, take those parts, and then upgrade the test bench. The test bench is getting a little outdated. It's a little buggy. I've had it for several, several, several years, probably longer than I should. So we need to get that updated, get myself something new, get the folks something a lot better. And that's how I do it. So I initially started off with the Case Labs case and an X299 water-cooled cell setup. As much as I wanted to keep that case, I had to part it out, flip the case, and I was able to actually make some decent profit on that. The X After I made the profit on that, which was $200, which I paid for everything, and I've already recouped the cost on that case, the X99 setup that was in there is all free. So pretty much after recouping my costs, I have a free motherboard, CPU, memory, um, it actually came with an M.2, so pretty not a bad deal. Then, got on the Facebook marketplace and saw a scam starter PC, which, long story short, it was a Phenom 2 setup claiming to be a starter gaming PC, which barely could play anything. But the reason why I paid the $50 for it was it had good bones and it had value. The case was pretty decent. So we were able to take an i5 fourth gen that I picked up on a used parts deal, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Pop that in there with a 760, throw in a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, and I was able to flip that for $150. And to recoup the cost from all that, the MSI motherboard that came with it that supports uh, FX and Phantom and all that stuff, it was an 890. It was one of those, I guess it was a high end? I don't know. Either way, I popped it up on the eBay. It sold for $100 with the CPU and everything. And after fees and everything, I was able to make $80, which I recouped that, which wounded me with pretty much all the extra parts not costing me anything. And that's how we kind of do things a bit over here. Just because parts are old, there is value to somebody and you can always sell them out. Moving on, went to Arizona and picked up three PCs complete for $150. Um, one, which is up there today. The other one, which is right here, which is going to be today's video, and the other one was the white Fantex case, which we put the X99 setup in there, the motherboard that came from that uh, PC out of Arizona, and I know it's confusing, we were able to put it in another PC, but long story short, I've been able to recoup my costs, make extra money, and flip this, which leaves me a total profit from doing all this, about $500, which leaves me a profit of $500, recouping all my costs, and... We're in the positive. So we're doing pretty good, all for a couple of hours worth of work. It seems like a lot of work, but it actually has not been. So today's computer is this one. This is the second one that came from Arizona, complete with SSD, all that good stuff and everything. And today we're gonna get, today we're gonna maximize how much we can get out of this computer, put a decent computer together, sell it, and increase my budget, allowing me to upgrade my personal rig. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly my recommendation if you're in a situation like this. So now to the eyes that are naked, it doesn't look like much of a computer. You're right, at least not to some, but to others, it works pretty good. So now this one has a Corsair 550 power supply, works great, I've already tested it. it has an i5-4570, it's an i5 fourth gen. It's the K version, if I'm not mistaken. 16 gigs of DDR3, and it has a GTX 760. So now I could just clean this up, refurbish it, slap it together, and probably flip it easy for about $100 to $150, but there's more money to be made out of this. And let me tell you why. This case is tall, and because this case is tall, I can use it for another motherboard CPU combo that I have lying around that requires a tall case like this. I'm about to show you in a second. So. I need the case, I need the power supply, but I don't need this right over here. In fact, I posted up on the Facebook Marketplace and I was able to sell the motherboard, CPU, and memory, graphics cards I am keeping for another project, but I was able to sell that for $60, pretty much making this $50 computer free with a $10 profit. That's how you do it. So with that being said, let me show you what we're gonna pop inside. And this is why you don't throw things away, folks. This one came out of a HP Z 
440. Pretty good motherboard CPU. I forget which Xeon is in here. Uh, when we boot it up, we'll see. This has 64 gigs of DDR4 ECC memory, and you'll be proud of me. I ordered the IO Shield straight from China. So this is what we're gonna put in here. But the reason why I said I need this case like this is if you look at the power adapter, it's not your traditional type, and it's actually up here. And the issue that you run into is that when you run this, uh, let's see, which one is it? There it is. When you run this, just like so, nope, not that one. Yeah, there you go. When you run it, traditional cases that are not tall, this will not fit. You can't put the motherboard in there. But because we have ample clearance up here, I should be able to use this and finally put this computer together and sell it. So I've been waiting on the proper case for this. So now this is a, a part of a system that a case swap sold to somebody. They had it for about six, eight months and they bought something better from me. And what they did was in exchange for building the computer and helping them get the parts, they let me keep the old stuff. I've already utilized all the other parts that I got from that rig, but I kept this waiting for a moment such as this. And honestly, case swapping these HP motherboards, Z440, 420, is very simple. I'll go over it, and maybe this might be something you want to do. Man, this case is heavy. Woo. So now for our storage, this one did come with a storage drive. It's a 256 gig Samsung Low Life. I've already checked on it, and well, it wasn't used too much, and it works perfectly fine. So we're definitely going to utilize this. As far as storage for games, I have a whole bunch of... Um, one terabyte, two terabyte Western digital drives that are in perfect condition. We'll pop that in. That will work perfect. So first things first, let's get out this graphics card, motherboard. I think that's it. And then we can kind of dust and clean this up. Zotac. And this is the 770, two gig flavor. She's dusty and crusty, but she does work. Now let's just delete on all this. Now, if you drop a screw, make sure you find it because you don't want to find it when, you know, it shorts things out. A couple of years ago, I built a computer, I dropped a screw, walked away and forgot I dropped it. And yeah, I found it tucked somewhere. I think it was behind the motherboard or something like that. Can't remember what screw it was, but I found the screw after I took the computer apart because it wasn't posting and turning on and all that stuff. Yeah, shorted the motherboard. And some people ask why I take things apart this way. Honestly, it's easier to film. If I wasn't filming, I typically lay it flat, but for the camera angle, this is a lot more better. Oops, forgot about the fan. Anything else? Nice. Let's open up the back. Not too bad. I mean, we got some dust bunnies and we'll clean all this stuff up and anything, so. All right, let me clean this off camera. I'm mostly gonna focus on just showing how to do the cape swap for the Z440. I've done it in another video, but I'll do it just to kind of highlight this and then we should put it together, but let me get this cleaned. And 20 minutes later, looks clean, looks a lot better. So very happy with that. So that is good. So now we need to get the motherboard in there. So let's put you down right over here. All right, so let's install this. I know I get a lot of hate for not using the IO plate. I mean, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. But I was on eBay and there was no rush for this and that was like $2 from China, so. And I didn't need to sell that motherboard or move it right away, so, well, I was willing to wait. So now we need to pop this in, and let's get this plug in, just like so. And this wiring, you could get them on Amazon. I think that's where I got mine from. Fairly cheap. Perfect. And as you can see... If the case was a smaller profile, it would not fit up there. 
All right, that sits in perfect. So now for our front IO and pinout, I'm actually gonna have to go back and watch my video because I don't remember. I think it's one of these two, uh, maybe over here. I'll go back, I'll watch the video, and then I'll post on the screen the pinout. That would be a lot easier because, yeah, I definitely don't remember it. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, typically you have that center standoff. These motherboards don't have that. They're actually off-centered. So if you have that center one, just move it over here and take it out the middle because it might touch a pin. I don't know. I've never ran into that issue. I usually take it out and catch ahead of time, but just keep that in mind. There we go. That this one is not going to line up where it's supposed to be over here. So your best bet, just take it out, move it over here. These two holes, they won't line up, but everything else lines up perfect. You have plenty of support. Good enough. All right, so kind of show it a little bit, just to recap. So on the bottom, where you see the connector on the left, the left is your HD audio. That fits in like normal. You notice you're gonna have two blank pins towards the left side of the screen. That's fine, just ignore those. They don't matter anything. The pins that you need to worry about are the six to the left on that big long connector right over here. The top two is the power LED, the bottom two is the hard drive LED, and on the bottom next to the hard drive LED on the right of it is the power switch. Yes, it's the power switch. I'll post it on the screen. That's all you need to do, no splicing. Our USB 3 plugs in just like so, and you should be good. Now for our rear fan, we need to plug one in. I need a four pin, this is a three pin, so we'll go into my stash. If you use a three pin, you'll get an error, so make sure you plug in a four pin. And I think that takes care of all the errors. If I'm missing one, then I'll go back and watch the video and then just uh, adapt as need be. And then of course, the other thing that we gotta do is plug this in. This is the adapter for a 24 pin. We have the adapter up there for a six pin. If I could squeeze this in. Maybe. Come on. There we go. And it's hard to do this one handed. And then we'll run this to the back. We'll run this to the back for our adapter for a 24 pin just to clean that up. And then the same thing over here. We'll take this, we'll tuck it through the back so it'll be a lot cleaner. And we should be good. So let me go ahead, finish a few things off camera. Like I said, if you want a more in-depth guide on this, where I actually did it on a test bench, I'll post a link to that video. But it's very easy to swap these motherboards. It's been a bit, and I've done a bunch of work off camera. So if you look, we've got some changes, but the cable management is mostly there. This thing is looking clean, very good, very happy with it. So here's what we got going on. If you notice, the fan. This is not a 120 millimeter, in fact, not even a 140 millimeter, which you could put in here. Whoops, I'll fix that later. But anywho, um, I ran out of four pin fans. You need to have a four pin or you're gonna get that fan error. Fortunately, I did keep this fan um, for the HP Z440. It works fine, we can use that. I just gotta make it to the Silver Knights PC and pick up some uh, four pin fans just to have stocked up. Running low, didn't realize that. Have a whole bunch of three pins, but no four pins. But it works and it shouldn't give us the error. So moving on to the next thing, the Frankenstein graphics card. I'm sure you guys remember this. This is an RX 580, eight gig version. And I got it like, was it for cheap or for free? I wanna say it was for free. Yeah, I think it was for free or was fixing it for somebody. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I didn't pay for it. But anyways, yeah, I know. It looks kind of, yeah. Here's the thing. I can go ahead and I can order the cooler that's supposed to come with it or find one or something like that. But since I've done the fans this way, this card performs a lot better. It is way quieter. The temperatures are a lot lower. And... I think that's the better way to go instead of putting the other card in. Now, if this was gonna be one of those Windows cases, um, yeah, I could see it, but this is actually a lot improvement. If not, it is louder. You do get some thermal throttling. It's just a hot card, but it runs really good with that. I think it's gonna be fine, and that is something I will disclose and I will show when I do sell this. And in fact, we got a buyer, and I'll talk to you about that in just a sec. But other than that, we got the 256, the one terabyte mechanical drive. Whoops. There we go. 
In our cables, as you can see, our adapter for the 24 pin and the CPU power tuck away nicely. We got our 64 gigs of DDR4 ECC. Power supply, everything's looking good, nice and clean. So let's go ahead. Let's make sure that we're good here, here. Got that plugged in. Now this drive should have the version of Windows that was with this motherboard. I think I cloned it and I save it. I tend to do that for older hardwares when I repurpose um, drives. So let's fire it up. Got a little white light there. I kind of like that. And I will show you with this HP Z440, we will have no errors. Look at that. No errors for USB, audio, fan, or anything like that. And the only thing that we had to do for this motherboard swap was buying those adapters. I'll put a link for that below. But the pinout and everything, no modding. I think it was the Z240. It was the Z240 that you had to do something with the grounds with the USB or you would get an error. But other than that, Windows 11 is installed. It is fully activated and it has all the updates. So there is some work around that we can do. Uh, AMD software requires a reboot to begin. Yeah. So let's go ahead and reboot it. Computer's quiet. It's running great. And I'm very happy with it. So a computer like this is what I like to call my favorites, the Frankenstein computers. Because the Z440 motherboard was not meant to be rehomed, but you can do it. A graphics card like this where we improved on it with better fans, better airflow, works really good. And even this thing with the fan, I mean, hey, if it works, it works. Don't worry, I'll put a regular four pin in there. I just needed to do it to show proof of concept so we don't get the error. So now the computer is actually sold. Just before hitting the camera on, the guy texted me to confirm. I sent him a picture, showed him the specs of what I have. He's bought several computers from me before and it has sold for $250. So pretty much this whole computer, because I was able to flip and juggle parts and sell things off, cost me nothing and I've made a $250 profit making my goal to building my newer computer up to $750. That is flipping amazing. So now the tip I can give you for doing this is number one, maximize your profits, maximize what you have. I mean, the system that we started with initially, I've went ahead, I flipped that for $60. That adds to my profits and recruits uh, what I spend to get to it and then also take care of your customers the guy who bought it he's bought several computers from me he's happy with them he likes them so yeah he's gonna keep coming back and the biggest thing i recommend too is being transparent be honest when i post a listing i let people know this is how old it is i refurbished it this is what you can expect out of it and i'll even show videos of it running playing some games i ask them what type of games that they are trying to play kind of like an interview type deal because they say hey i'm interested i always respond what are you looking to do with it and then I will let them know, hey, this is how well this thing is going to work. Give them an idea if they wanted to upgrade. Like in this case, if you want to pop in something like a 1080, 1080 Ti, definitely get more performance, bigger storage, more memory, even a faster CPU. So I'm going to finish wrapping this up. That is awesome. Our budget's up to $750, but we are not done. We still have another one that we need to try to see. Can we do the same thing? This one with the Cooler Master case. And then the next video or whenever it comes out, we're going to grab that one, pop it down, see what we can do with the parts, maybe see if we can sell off some of the parts, or maybe just try to make a cheap budget gaming PC, throw in something with a mouse, monitor, keyboard combo, and see if we could flip it for at least $100 to $150, just depending on if I could recoup the initial cost of it. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. What are your opinions on Frankenstein computers like this? Are they good value? Is this something that you have done? And what tips do you recommend for selling a computer? One tip I do recommend, RGB does sell. We have a little bit of that in the front. So when we take, if we were to sell this on the marketplace, we would actually highlight that, get some good images. And it really attracts a lot, a lot of people. If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not. And as always, we'll see what we come up with next.